Yeah, today we'll talk about Git. Maybe before going into motivation, I want to give people a little bit of overview of what to expect. So yeah. I will maybe dial back here. So here you can always find where we are. And the link that I will open right now is this one. And, and it's up here. I want to give you an overview of what to expect today, what to expect tomorrow, uh, when, when to expect breaks. We will do breaks, when to expect exercises. So I know the font is a little bit small. I will zoom in to make that more visible. So plan for today is that we want to talk about version control and Git. We will clarify what is the difference between Git and GitHub. It's mm -hmm. not a problem at all if you are new to these tools. And we, we saw from, from the notes that many people are new to it. So we will I understand mm -hmm. we have a way for both new and more advanced people to get something from this week. Exactly. So we will yeah. try to keep everybody really interested. There will be, so if you are new to Git, GitHub, no problem at all. We, you can start from zero. If you are already familiar with Git and GitHub, there will be also interesting new things to learn both today and tomorrow. So please, everybody stay with us. Those who are very experienced, they can, for instance, help us answering questions in the notes. So that's one, or, or help your neighbor. If you work in a team, help your teammate. So many different ways to participate. Yeah. We have on kind of, we will do this in an interesting way. We will actually not start from an empty project. We used to do that in the past. We will start today on GitHub. So we will start with something that already exists. We will start with an existing repository on the web mm -hmm. because we felt it will be um, it will be more instructive for everybody to see how does how does how does it really look in practice. Um, today, we after short motivation, we will then uh, everybody will copy this repository. And the first exercise, which will start in circa 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes will be that we will copy this example repository and browse it and uh, answer a few questions about it. Or we will then take a break. After the break, we will learn how to make changes to this, to this repository. And then we will take a longer break and then we will practice some more. So we will also learn about what are these things called branches, how can we merge developments. And then tomorrow we will, there are a couple of episodes that we will do tomorrow. So tomorrow we will learn how to clone, inspect history, and how to turn your own project into a Git repository that you can share and publish on okay. GitHub. Yeah, so the big picture is today it's like we're contributing to an existing project someone has already set up, and mm -hmm. tomorrow we start to see how to do this from scratch with your own stuff. Yes. Look at, okay, good. And yeah. on this page, you will find that there is a lot more stuff, and we will not show everything that is here on the page. Uh, we We chose to show you the most important episodes, but then if you are curious about browsing some of the other episodes, uh, you can do that. And I mentioned that, so today we will have three exercise sessions. They will be 20 minutes long. Uh, one will be in the first hour, the, sec the, the second will be in the second hour, and then the third one will be after the longer break. If you are participating as a team, you can then work together and help each other within the team. If you are participating on your own, you can also go through the exercises and all of these will, will have solutions. And I also wanted to mention now, before we go in, uh, how to participate. So the best way to participate is have the notes open to ask questions or to read questions of other people. Uh, then, on the other half of your screen, you can have the stream. You can watch uh, Richard and me instructing. 
and then we will do uh, some practicing which which will be in the browser or using Visual Studio Code or using Terminal. So we we offer participants to choose then uh, different ways to participate uh, to, to learn Git, but more about that in a moment. And if that becomes too much, too many windows, you can then, you can also unwatch the, the notes and just focus on the stream. And if also, if you need to go to a meeting or somewhere else, you can you can later also rewatch a recording. We will later today publish um, recordings from from these sessions. Good. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about motivation. So why do we? Uh, I will go into this motivation section here. Um, why do we spend two three days on Git and version control because it's maybe the most important. Uh, kind of concept in reproducible research coding, isn't it so? Yeah, um, I guess it's the, well, certainly it's the thing that transformed my work from a bunch of random things to something that can seem like work. But also like when I work with people, the transition to starting to use version control marks the start of a professionalism that's like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm actually making a thing and other people actually can use it. They can understand it. They can solve problems better. So it really is like the first step to, well, mm -hmm. stuff. And what it is, yeah. so we've been mentioning version control. It's controlling versions, keeping track of versions. And then we mentioned this thing called Git, which is, which is a tool that yeah. implements this. It's not the only tool, but so, it's the tool that we demonstrate here. So to be clear, Git is the name of a tool. Yes. OK. And that's the one we teach. It is the most popular one. We think it's good for everybody to have have seen it. Yeah. And keeping track of versions, here I have two examples from a project, which, if you like, you can browse it uh, online. It's an older project of mine. And as I was developing, I was like saving versions as I go. I, I like to think of Git and version control like keeping a logbook, uh, like a lab notebook. So as I go, I was saving versions. And on this page, we show two different views of it. The, the one on top is I took a screenshot from a browser. So this is the view on GitHub. GitHub is a place. It's like a web uh, platform to browse and contribute to Git repositories. So on top, it's a screenshot from a web. On the bottom, it's a screenshot from when I was on the terminal window. And it's two different views to the same thing. And what you see here are changes. So as I was developing, I was saving changes. And Git and version control is not only about keeping changes, it's also about keeping metadata about the changes. So what you see here is actually the metadata of the changes. Who did it, the author, when when did it happen, and why was I making these changes? So I kept these short summaries of um, changes. And this is what we will be doing. And so what we see here, later we will call them commits. These are Git commits. A commit is like a snapshot. A change and a metadata. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool that we get questions here. So please keep these questions coming. Um, yeah. uh, Richard will help me that we don't the, miss any questions that we should discuss in voice. Yeah. And I'm on my different screen. I'm also watching yeah. uh, watching your questions. This first question, are we going to talk about that soon? Or the Git versus GitHub? Because this always comes up as one of the first questions. Yeah, let's clarify it now. So Git okay. is this program that keeps track of versions and GitHub is a web uh, portal platform where we can share, visualize, browse, contribute to Git repositories. And it's not the only one. Another very popular one is called GitLab. Yeah, many universities may have their own GitLabs running. For example, yeah. Alta University has a GitLab 
because it has an open source version, GitLab does, so people can host it themselves. And yeah, so we really today we want everybody to start using Git, and the reason is because uh, it provides an answer to this to a couple of questions that maybe you have heard or asked. So the some of them I definitely recognize from my work. So for instance, it broke. So you develop something and suddenly it doesn't work anymore. Hopefully you have a working version somewhere. Who here has uh, heard this question? Can you please send me the latest version? <laughs> mm -hmm. And where is even the latest version? And when you when you collaborate with with others on it can be code or it can be a manuscript. Uh, we want to avoid confusion of which version are people using or which version have the authors used in the paper that I'm trying to reproduce here. There will be a moment when you find a bug in your code and then you want to know since when was it there? Was it there before the publication? Was it there or did it appear after the publication? And we need a way to answer these questions. And what if your laptop is suddenly gone? or oh, the hard drive failed, uh, is the thesis now gone? So these questions are maybe familiar and version control provides an answer. Because one thing uh, one thing we can do is we can, if I mess up, I can go back to a version that used to work. Yeah, like even just for me, before I was using Git all the time, there was this constant problem. I would make some changes and then I say, oh, I just broke my scientific code. Now I'm getting some different results. And I would spend hours or days trying to figure out what I changed. And it's just the worst feeling ever. Like, why would I spend that much time? And the funny thing, this is even when I was using Git, but I wasn't recording often enough. So there were too many changes and I lost it. So even just things like this will save you I think it will save you far more time than you spend in it, even without yeah. all the other things. And even if you use it really badly and only with what you learn today and tomorrow, is mm -hmm. that the case? Yeah. Good. And before, there are two more things that I want to show before we go to our example repository. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just about keeping versions and being able to go back. There are two two really um, important possibilities. And one is that we can do branching and we try to visualize it here with these cute gophers that um, you can branch out. And um, for instance, if you collaborate with multiple people, one person can work on the graduation hat and another person can work on adding sunglasses to the gopher and we don't have to wait for each other. Yeah. I don't have to wait until you send me the version via email. We can work at the same time and later we can merge our developments yeah. into the main branch. So it can also be uh, just me on my own. If I'd want to try yeah. different things and I'm not very sure whether this is a good idea, I can create branches and later merge them really easily. So. This solves the problem of, let's say you're working on a manuscript and you send it out to your collaborators and they all send back their revised copies. And now you have to sit there and read all of them and combine them, mm -hmm. which is a big waste of time. So I guess here, branching is easy for anything. Merging yeah. is hard and what Git does well, if it's in a compatible format, is that? So what the Git does why? well is that it's really good at figuring out that even if multiple people edit the same file, if we edit it in different places, it can figure this out and combine these changes most of the time automatically. And we will later show also what happens if two people modify the same portion of the file and how to deal with it. We will come back to that uh, to later today. Yeah. One more thing I would like to show, and then we will go to our example repository, and that is that it's so important for reproducibility. And one feature that we, 
you will also then, you can try out in the exercise, is this annotation feature. And I will show you a real example here. I will open it up. And this is this is some Python code written by other people. We don't need to focus now on the uh, on what it what it really does. The the interesting feature I wanted to show you is this this thing that on GitHub it's called blame. It's not a good name. I wish it was called annotate. But I will oh here we have it. We have it on. So I can switch between code and blame. Um, but this annotation feature that I wanted to show is that since we kept track of versions for each line of the code, so on the right side, there is some Python code. For each line of this Python code, on the left side, I can see which commit, so which change modified this line last. And that is incredibly powerful because let's say that you find out that maybe you have a, questions about, a question about this line or you figure out that in this line of the code, there is a problem suddenly. And I really need to know when was this problem introduced. I can find out four years ago. And I can, here I could browse the precise commit, the precise change. And this is so important for reproducibility because then my next question is, is this before I published it, after I published it, do I need to inform my collaborators? And we need a mechanism to be able to do this. And with Git, we can. Should we go into our example repository? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll put, paste it in here. Yeah. So uh, I zoom out here just that you know that where to find it. So I will now navigate from the motivation to to this modify an existing project, copy and browse an existing project. Okay. I will go in here. And we will here explain. Uh, we will explain what you okay. need to do very briefly. And we will then send you to a 20 minute exercise block. And after the exercise block, we will take a break. And this example repository that we have is, is a collection of cooking recipes. So you don't, it will not be about Python, it will not be about R or MATLAB or C, it will be about cooking recipes. We think cooking recipes are relatable. And we offer you to participate to you in different, many different ways. You can participate directly on GitHub, just in the web browser, if you prefer to work in your editor, we recommend Visual Studio Code because it interfaces very nicely with GitHub. But for those of you who want to participate in the command line, uh, later below you can find uh, different tracks and then you can select between your favorite track. It can be the GitHub track or the VS Code track or the command line track or even more. I think there is some, we have also some options about uh, RStudio. And the first thing we will do in the exercise is to create a copy and on, on GitHub and on GitLab that is called a fork. So we will fork the repository and create your own copy because then you can modify the copy. And when creating this copy and we, we should also show that, I don't maybe I should do it or you Richard. Yeah, um, I, I can do the typing. Yeah. So your first step in the exercise block will be to create this fork and then you can choose, do you want to fork this one or do you want to fork this here? Both are the same. So we have two different ones. Once we, one record recipe book recorded because this is the one that we will show you on stream. If you want to make sure that none of the work you do shows up anywhere, then create a copy of this one. Uh, the thing that we will see here in the recorded one, we will see, we will see all the copies. We oh, which copies exist? We will not browse them. Don't worry, but we will see them. I don't know if you want to take screen from me and then create create the fork, or should I just show it here on? Uh, I can do it. So okay. I'm answering questions and putting the stuff there. Okay, so I will switch to my screen and you can walk me through it. Yeah. 
is that good. Okay. Yes, and this will be part of the exercise. So, um, mm. but we we just wanted to really show okay show how that works. So now it's just demo. Okay. Now it's just demo. I'm just waiting until I see. Here I am on GitHub, mm -hmm. and good. I guess you can't track me, what I'm doing very quickly, or can you? Not very quickly, but go back to the yeah. material and click on the recipe book recorded okay. one. So we go to browsing. This is the material. And we will open recipe book recorded. Yes. Okay. Recipe book recorded. I open it in a new tab. Yeah. Here I am. Okay. Good. And there are commits and so on, but it's part of the exercise, so people will explore that. But what we want to now show everybody is how to create this copy. And this is the fork yeah. button on top right. Here. OK, so I click it. Mm -hmm. OK, I make a fork. It will be owned by me yep. and the same name. I guess we can leave all of the stuff the same. Yes. And I click Create Fork. Okay. Yeah. So to clarify, this is now making a copy of this repository, but it's under my user. Yeah. Because now because it here says. You can make changes. Okay, right. okay. So I make yeah I make the changes here, and I guess we'll eventually learn how to send changes back or whatever. Okay. Exactly. So what? Yeah. What do I do now? And now you can go back to the lesson material and okay. uh, scroll down to the exercise box. Exercise. Yes, here we are. Mm -hmm. And should and I do some of these? No, we will. Uh, we will uh, give people time to to do these. That we have hints, and we we have also walkthroughs. I just wanted to give you the big picture. So the big picture, mm -hmm. what what your goal will be in twenty minutes is to create this fork, mm -hmm. and you will need to have a GitHub account, and you need to be logged in on GitHub. Yeah. And then we ask you a couple of questions. So there is, for instance, uh, try to find the commits, the commit history. Um, mm -hmm. Try to compare the commit history with the network graph and whether you are able to find the branches. OK. And I think when you forked, you only copied the main branch. So in your fork, maybe there's only one, but um, mm -hmm. but then people can can deselect it and they can get all the branches. OK. And then try to browse the recipes or try yeah. to find out when recipe was, for instance, last modified. We also have a question for you there on yeah. um, there is a guacamole recipe. And mm -hmm. we want to find out uh, how many changes it received, which yeah. recipes contain the ingredient salt, and who modified the guacamole recipe last. And so, right now, it's not yeah. about making any changes. Right now, it's just browsing because we will we will make changes. We will make new commits mm -hmm. in a later exercise, approximately one hour from now. Now it's just browsing. Yeah. So we're role playing that we're a new person starting a project, and we're trying to figure out what the status is, yes, and who's last did stuff, and how I'm going to get started. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and if you get stuck, there are hints, and below we have solution yeah. and walkthrough and what we will then later do with Richard once we return from exercise and once we return from break based on the questions that people have we might show you some of these steps here also on stream so best way to participate now is to you will now meet with your team or you work on your own go through these exercise steps one to eight and if you have questions you can ask them in the notes because we will be watching them we will be answering them and some of them, we will um, lift them up here to for discussion. Mm -hmm. And I would like to start now the exercise. Yeah. Okay. We will be back from the exercise 10 minutes past the hour. And then the only thing that we will do then is to announce a break. OK. OK, sounds good. So see you in 20 minutes. See you in 20 minutes. Good okay. luck. Thank you. All right, welcome back, everybody. 
in our studio here we have even we have a little red light going on that we are live um so hopefully this worked out uh thanks a lot for all the questions that came in if you got stuck somewhere don't worry about it because we will we will now take a 10 minute break but after the break uh, richard and me will go through some of the steps here on stream so you will also see them and then after the break we will not only browse a repository we will now start to make actually changes we will start to make commits but let's take a 10 minute break and see you in 10 minutes for more git yeah thanks see you later bye all righty welcome back from the break we will do now more git uh, so far we have only browsed commits created by other people but soon we will learn how to really create our own commits something we i should have spent a little bit more time on we didn't really comment so much on this choice to to work in on github or on vs code or on the command line my recommendation for today is if you are new to git or github go for github work in the browser all of today can be done in the browser most of tomorrow can be done in the browser um, it's only tomorrow where we will we will teach how to move from the from the web repository to a local repository so tomorrow we will have to choose between an editor and con command line so tomorrow we will recommend mm. to try vs code but today we we recommend to work yeah. in the github track we offer these two other tracks for the participants who prefer to to do these exercises in in vs code yeah. or in command line so these are all different ways of doing the same thing looking at the same data mm -hmm. yes that's the case okay mm -hmm. And okay. we we recommend GitHub because we believe that it's maybe maybe this is the easiest way to kind of understand what to have a mental representation of what's happening, and then later it will make maybe make you more confident to try the same things on the command line. And now before we <clears throat> start creating commits, we we wanted to show you some of these steps here and comment on them. So we will spend five minutes on that. And I will open up my fork. Oh, let me zoom in. This is my fork of the recipe book. How do I know that it's my fork? It's it's under my username. And mm -hmm. I can even see where did I fork from. And now uh, there were a couple of things we should have we should do. One thing was uh, browse the commit history and there is this clock symbol top right here. So if I click here, at the time of when I created the fork, there are 32 commits, there are 32 changes, and we could browse them, we could compare them. The other thing that we were supposed to do is to go on insights and network. And now it's need to do a little bit of thinking. But what we will see here is a visual representation of, we will see little dots, which are the commits. So these little dots, each of these is a, is a change. But we also see that there have been branching. There have been some, some changes have happened on branches, which have been later merged into the main branch. And here are even some new branches appearing. Good. Back to the recipe book. How do I know when a recipe was last modified? Well, we could click on one of those, for instance. Let's go into the sites. And guacamole, last, last modified six months ago. 
which recipes include the ingredient salt? No, how many changes? How many changes did the guacamole recipe have? Uh, what happens if I click on the file? And maybe I need to zoom out. How can I see the history? Is it this one maybe, the top right mm -hmm. one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this one has been changed one, two, three, four, five times. Which recipes include the ingredient salt? It's this search magnifying thing here. I can search for salt, for instance. And now it will search through the entire recipe book. Mm. Except that I should have done that uh, during the break because it, it needs a few minutes to create this search tree. So I will skip that, but you can, I will go to the next, which was in the guacamole recipe, we were supposed to figure out uh, who modified each line last and when, and this is this blame feature, mm -hmm. the Git annotation. For each line of my recipe, I know who modified it, when precisely, and I can even have a look at each of these commits. Question seven, can we, can you use these recipes yourself? And the hint there is to look at license file and by using means, well, can I change them <coughs> and share them? So there's a license <coughs> and it's creative commons zero. We will talk more about licenses next week. Now I clicked on the license thingy here. Anyway, more about licenses and what, what that means next week, but it's already a good instinct to before taking somebody else's code to see is there even a license there and what does it allow me to do. And then question eight in the upstream repository, what is upstream? Upstream is, it's a, this is how we call the original repository, the one that I forked from if I go back into there, so now there are issues and there are pull requests. And we will give more meaning to them in a bit, but we, now we can already say that issues, it's a good place to keep track of problems, but also suggestions, ideas. So it's not, it doesn't only have to be a problem that we know about. It can here, I earlier today, I shared an idea for for recipe and it can be a way to collect feedback before I do the coding. And pull requests, these are change proposals. And we will now create some of those in the next exercise. So this is now a mechanism to suggest changes which can be within the same repository or it can be from a fork towards the upstream repository. And here earlier today, I made a suggestion for a vegetable soup and somebody else made a suggestion to, to improve the vegetarian lasagna. Excellent. But now we should go back to the material and take the next step. And that is commit to now we want to create some commits. We want to actually modify this repository and since we can, since it's now uh, under your username. So I will navigate to committing changes and let's make sure that you can see that too on the notes. Yes, I yes, just can. Thanks a lot. There. What do we want to do here? We, we want to record new changes and we call them commits. And we will do that on two separate branches. And branches are these different development lines. And we, we remember this image of these uh, gophers. So we will try to do something similar here. And here is another sketch of what, what this exercise is about. This exercise will happen on your fork. And the first thing that you will do is you will create a new branch Mm -hmm. And in Git, 
branches are like sticky notes. You can think of it, it's like a sticky note that's, that is referencing a commit. Yeah, okay. Wait, the sticky note metaphor, what does that mean exactly? So there's some history of commits and the branch, the sticky note refers to what exactly? Like where? So when we create a branch, it's like it's like creating a different name for a commit. So the first step will be to create this new branch, which will not yet create a new commit. So this is the situation A. How should we call the branch? We shouldn't call it your branch. Oh, how do you call your branches when you create one? Hmm. I mean, usually I call it something based on what I'm going to do there. So it might be like improve code or it might be a yeah. feature name if I'm adding a feature. Usually something Great. about what I plan to work on. Yeah. So make it descriptive. Yeah. So instead of your branch, you will call it, for instance. I guess the, the uh, name of the recipe you're making. Exactly. Yeah. So Without if you want spaces, to make a new salad but... recipe, then it would be a oh, new salad or something. Yeah. So step one will be creating mm -hmm. a new branch. And again, for most people, we recommend to do that directly on GitHub. But we also then show tracks on how to do it on the command line, how to do it in, in VS Code. Once you have the branch, uh, we ask you to create a commit on the new branch and then create another one. So two commits on the, on the new branch. So this would be like you make a new recipe and then you fix something mm -hmm. up about the recipe. Like yeah. you realize, ah, oh, I needed mm -hmm. to add this extra thing. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. New recipe, modifying the ingredient, something like that. So we have a new branch, we have two commits. Mm -hmm. And then your goal will be to switch back to main, the main branch, and create a new commit there. And again, you can modify something, you can modify mm -hmm. an existing recipe. So after this exercise, we will have all created three commits. Yeah. Two on a new branch, one on the main main branch. And then Oh, and then you can browse, you can see whether, if you remember, if I go back to, uh, if I go back to, just need to zoom out here on insights. If you remember insights mm. and network, here okay. you can browse the, like the graph of your commits and you can then yes. compare, does this look like what you just created? So, okay, yeah, so that's all the history. So if we're role-playing a young researcher here, mm -hmm. I've started a new project, I've understood it. I want to contribute to it by adding my own recipe. So mm -hmm. I make a new branch and I start adding there, something there. So that yep. way it doesn't, get me it doesn't mess up what other people may have. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, someone on the main branch does something different. Correct. Okay. And yeah. everything that we will do here is it only exists on your fork. So you don't have to be worried about you cannot you cannot break anything. If so there are a few more like extra steps. At the end is to try to compare branches. And again below we show solution and a walkthrough. We also ask you, you can try to rename a branch that you created because maybe you changed your mind about the name. So try that. And then there is one more step and that is uh, try to create a tag. So what is a tag? And on GitHub, it's called a release. Mm -hmm. uh, a tag is very similar to a branch, but it's, it's like an, little sticky note that you will want to put on a commit mm. or mm -hmm. I so think... that you hmm? yeah Wait, can we say branches and tags all point to put places in the history but yeah. tags don't change so the tag is like this is the version that i 
submitted for this paper or something. Yeah. And that's just a fact that will never change. It's like a milestone. So yeah. a, a mm -hmm. typical tag could be a version number, like this is my version 2.0, or it could be, this is the submitted paper. This is the PhD version. This is the published code. So that's that will be, again, we will give you 20 minutes. Step one to eight, uh, one to nine, you work on your fork. Again, you can choose your favorite track. Again, please ask us questions on the notes. And before sending you to the exercise, I'm also now just catching up on the notes to see if we missed some really important question that we should clarify. I think we're doing pretty good. Um... Good. And then we will yeah. be back in 20 minutes. So we will give you 20 minutes for this exercise. And in the last five minutes before the longer break, um, again, we will highlight some maybe tricky steps and discuss them here. Yeah. Okay. Great. So we'll keep answering the questions and see you in 20 minutes. Yeah. Here you can find the exercise. See you in 20 minutes. Let's create some commits. Welcome back, everybody. We have um, five-ish minute, minutes left before we take a longer break. And in this five minutes, we wanted to show you some of these steps and discuss and summarize. And before doing this, I wanted to show you in the notes below the exercise, we have this poll. You can use it also in future exercises to let us know how things are going. Um, whether you are done, whether it's confusing, whether you are not trying, this gives us an idea of uh, how, so that we can adjust better. So please let us know in future exercises. Yeah. And now I will okay. go to my fork and uh, Richard, you tell me what I should do and what I should show. So yeah. this is here my... So we're doing some stuff that's quite similar to the exercises. So first is making a new branch. So you've got a new idea for a recipe, I hear, mm -hmm. and would like to contribute it. So yeah, what and is that I'll show idea? you how I create a branch here, which is and here, you... there's this main branch um, okay. symbol. And this is, there are some other branches. Yeah. But I, will, I can create a new one. Okay. I so... like to give branches somehow like my name, because then I know uh, who created them and in this case i want to improve pasta okay so Create this new branch okay yep good so now you can or can you verify the new branch and yes. i'm here i'm on it so this is if i would zoom out or uh, it would have the full name okay yeah there is a really good question in the notes about this how do you verify what branch you're on and mm -hmm. quite often a thing that can happen is people are using many branches and start doing stuff on the wrong branch and you can sort of recover from that or mm -hmm. just ignore it and go on but it's good to pay attention to okay so we're on the right branch and now we make one commit for something yeah. so i will go on like pasta and i will try to improve this this recipe here which which okay. is lacking instructions so i will add an instruction yeah uh -huh. I will do it here directly on in the web, edit this file, mm -hmm. button, and well, maybe we should start by <clears throat> saute the onion and mushrooms. And later we need more mm -hmm. instructions, but that's, that's a good starting point. Yeah, okay. Uh, what, yeah. what to do now, commit changes. Mm -hmm. So this this will now create this new commit. And here I verify on which branch I am. So this is another chance to for me to check that I really wanted to commit to this new branch. Good. I want to change this commit message because this is not very useful mm -hmm. to, yes, I modified the file. Yeah. It's much better to describe here in one line, what did I do? Why did I change it? So I starting to improve the instructions for this recipe. 
And here, if I wanted, I could add more context. If I'm more explanation, I could refer to an issue. But I think here we are happy. Well, do we want to commit? Yes, yeah. let's commit. What should I do okay. next? Can we verify the commit in the network? So how did I find it? It was top insights. Okay. Insights, yeah. A network. Loading, loading, loading. I think a couple of other people also reported that things take a little bit of time. Yeah. But this gives That's me a chance okay. to catch up with questions. Here we go. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people working now. So all these different commits here. Very cool. And here is mine. Uh, Can you zoom in some? Does it scale properly? Does that basically say the name you just made? Yeah, I wonder what this is now. Yeah. So it's this green green little dot is my new commit. Okay. And if I tilt my head, I can read that this is this vegetable soup soup branch. Is that what I wanted? No, that's not what I wanted. No. Are we that's wrong. I created yeah. this is the new there one. There we go. Okay. Improve pasta. Yes. Okay. And the other essential thing is I think there are uh, the main branch didn't change. And these little labels that are sticking next to the commits. This is what I was referring to as sticky notes. So these are the branch names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other observation is that I created a new commit and a new branch in my fork, which didn't. So everybody else can see that it exists, but it doesn't, it doesn't appear in, in the forks of the other people. This we will do after the longer break on we will learn how, how do we really now send changes um, both how do we merge them into the main branch and how do we even make change suggestions across repositories. This will be later. Yeah. I think we wanted to show one more kind of fun thing and that yeah. is to, whoops, to compare branches. For this I will just zoom out a little bit. So if you take a repository and at the end you add a compare, mm -hmm. okay, and we can choose two repositories and two mm -hmm. branches there. So basically so yeah, we'll we mm -hmm. can see what's the difference between the main branch and your new improved pasta branch, for example. Yeah, this one. Okay. So the difference between main branch and the improved pasta branch is, well, these two lines were added and this line got removed. So the red is what got removed, green is what got added. Yeah. Okay. Good. There was more um, in the exercise and there is more on the page. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of good questions coming in, which, um. Let's see, is there anything we need to answer for everyone? Some still need answers there. In the timeline, what's the horizontal axis? Is it minutes or arbitrary or whatever? In the, In... on the network? Uh, yes, in the network. So here the timeline is it's chronologically ordered. Yeah. Oh, once it loads. Okay. Oh, so there are a couple of more questions on the. So here this is chronologically. So yeah. time time axis. Oh, very good questions on the bottom. We will answer them. Yeah. But Can I we... recommend that we take now this sixty minute break. This is this has been designed because. Well, most participants are in Central Europe and this is aligns well with the lunch break. But thanks for everybody else in different time zones to follow for following. Yeah. And so we will be back in 60 minutes. And then we will then our goal will be to learn how to combine these changes from different branches, mm -hmm. merging changes and contributing to uh, to a project. Yeah, that's the goal for the remaining one and a half hours, which we will do after the one hour break.
there's one question it's about showing the compare function again, but do we have time to do that? Yeah, because I think the, the, the part that went quickly, I will just navigate back to my repository. So one was, you take any repository name and at the end add, it a, add a compare, enter. But the other thing that was a little bit quickly is that you can choose not only which branch, but also which repository. Mm -hmm. So here, the first thing I did is I wanted to compare within my own repository. So I selected my repository here. And now it's changed a bit because now it just asked me which branch to which branch. And now I can select which branch I want to compare. Yeah. Good. OK. We will be back in 56 minutes. Or should we do, say, 60 minutes, 56 minutes, just to make yeah, it easier okay. for those who want to join and have, we are not here in the morning. And then we will do some com uh, done some merges. Yeah. And you can keep asking questions. We don't promise to answer during the break, but we might if we have time. So, yes. Great. Hopefully, see you soon. Yeah. Excellent work, everybody. See you in a bit. Have a good okay. break. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hope you had the possibility to take a break. And yeah. I will also just take here a few minutes for a few moments for everybody to settle. We have one and a half hour left to do a bit more with Git and version control. In this remaining one and a half hours, we will also take, there will be another break um, roughly 55 minutes from now. And we will here <clears throat> we will continue where we left off for the break. And the place where we left off is that we copied the repository full of recipes. I'm switching to your screen. Is that good? Oh yeah. Yes, please do. Okay. There you go. Yeah, so here is where we left off just before the break. We copied an existing repository full of recipes. We created a branch, and on the new branch, we created one or two commits. It's mm -hmm. if you didn't manage to go uh, to get that far, it's not a problem because in the remaining exercise, you will have time to catch up there. But what we now want to do in the remaining time is to learn how to merge these branches back into main. So, in more okay. explicitly, this your branch, and in my case, it was some uh, pasta improvement. Um, now I'm happy with it, and I would like to now find a way to propose to to merge this development back into the main branch. Yeah. And for this, I will now just zoom out so that everybody knows where I will navigate next, and we will, let's paste it also in the notes. Okay. I will now navigate to the next episode, which is merging changes and contributing to the project. Okay, it is in the notes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And thanks also for all the questions. Some still need an answer, but we will get there. So the goal now for us is that we, we want to learn about this thing called pull request. The name is historical, but whenever I hear pull request, I think change proposal. So we will be saying pull request, pull request, pull request, pull request, and then everybody will think change proposal, change proposal, change proposal, change proposal. It's a mechanism to propose changes. It's a mechanism to merge branches together. And we will do that within within our own repositories. Yeah. And maybe accidentally, maybe we will accidentally change, send a change proposal across repositories to the upstream. And that's okay too, because mm -hmm. that will be interesting too. So for in our, like, okay, like to clarify pull request a little bit in my mind, you said it's like change proposal. In this role playing thing, like I'm a new person that's joined a research group and I'm doing something, when would the pull request and change proposals be useful? 
like when would I use one and when would I not use one, for example. Yeah, um, uh, to answer a question, maybe I will use this image here, uh, which illustrates a bit what we tried to do. So here oh. I tried to propose a change I want to have the change on the main branch. I want to have this improved pasta recipe on the main branch, but I didn't do it directly on the main branch. I first did it on my on my um, pasta improved pasta branch, and mm -hmm. now I suggest somebody to actually review this change. So the the role, the situation here might be that we are maybe two people or more. Maybe it's us two who collaborate on a research project. We are both working within within this repository, and one situation could be that maybe I would like you to review this change before it goes in and give me your yeah. comments. So it's like a big code that many people are working on, and I'm doing something, but I'm not confident it will work or it's correct, and don't mm -hmm. want to take yeah. any risks. Okay, yeah. It could be that. It could be about avoiding risk and getting feedback. It could also be that I just want to inform you about this change. Mm -hmm. So it could be that, mm -hmm. well, we are, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be a small project and yeah. it's maybe just us two, but I would like you to know about it. So, so like, now I can send the pull, a pull request, the change proposal, and I can involve yeah. you in, the, in it. Yeah. So simply a way to have everyone know what's going on without mm -hmm. surprises, even yeah. if you already know what you're doing, basically. Yeah. Okay. So I like to... For me, that's actually yeah. this like collaborative yeah. learning and knowledge transfer is mm -hmm. even more important than like the quality part of it, mm -hmm. the quality mm -hmm. assurance. Yeah. Uh, we. It can also be useful if you are just on your own, because then uh, maybe I wasn't sure myself whether this will work out, whether I will be happy with the recipe, and here I am happy with the recipe, and I just want to mm -hmm. integrate mm -hmm. it back into main, and I will use this mechanism called pull request. Yeah. Uh, we again we offer to do that in the browser or in VS Code or in the command line. Yeah. People who who will follow in the command line they will notice that this is a lot easier because for them it's just a command. It will be one command enter and it's merged. But we still recommend most participants to follow to do this on GitHub. On GitHub it will be few clicks. But the nice thing is uh, that it will already prepare us for how collaboration works. Because when we collaborate on GitHub or GitLab, it's the same mechanism. Um, it is always through these um, change proposals. It's mm -hmm. always through these pull requests. So this mechanism that we will practice today, although we are maybe alone and although it's just my own repository, it will prepare us for when we collaborate and we will collaborate we will learn a lot about collaboration this Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think there was, there was a previous question before lunch that said, how do I know what branch I'm on? And this is where this starts to become really important. If you think you're working on your branch, like in this picture here, but yeah. you're actually on the main branch, stuff starts to get really weird and confusing. And you have to look at the network view to sort things out. So yeah, it's good to, when you're doing this, stop, think, am I on the right branch? And then do it. And in approximately five minutes, we will then start another exercise. But before that, we want to prepare you for what to expect. There are also some possible traps and <laughs> we will uh, show you what what to expect and what to avoid. But really our goal will be what this illustration shows. Our goal will be to do two steps. One step is open up a pull request, open up a change proposal. And in the second step, we will accept it. Okay. And so so we're, change. we make the proposal and we accept it ourselves, possibly. Yes. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it could happen that, um, at the end of the exercise, if somebody wants more, and if somebody wants to have some bonus exercise, they can try to send a pull request across repositories, not to their main branch, but to our main mm -hmm. branch, to the upstream. Yeah. And then we will we will see 
the changes also in the in the original repository and this already gives us a starting point it will set us up for collaboration mm -hmm. and if it happens accidentally that's also okay so i think some people will accidentally send the pull request to the upstream repository and that's fine too yeah it okay. might also happen that you modify the same file and the same portion of the file in two different ways on your branch and on main it might happen so some of you might see a conflict in this exercise and if you do don't panic because we will the the last half an hour of today we will discuss conflicts why why they happen why they are good a good thing and how to solve them but that will be a demonstration so in the last half an hour richard and me will we will create a conflict on mm -hmm. github and we will show you how you can solve it okay well, let me just Good. i will just make sure that i didn't forget anything really essential um, before we send you to the exercise we wanted to show you what to what to be careful about when when opening a pull request so that will be part of the exercise but i wanted to demonstrate it mm -hmm. i will now so now please just watch yeah okay and you will have a chance to do the same thing then as part of the exercise okay yeah I'm so we start back here in my repository your is, copy of the repository exactly it's my yes. copy before the break i created this branch with with one commit in my case if if you don't have it yet you can create it in the exercise I, I still have it and one way to open up this pull request is to click here uh -huh. so the branch is already made and we yeah it remembers we've made a branch recently so yeah and since office. i'm logged in github now anticipates that well probably i want to create a pull request mm -hmm. If, okay. Yeah, so then I can click here. But the the tricky part here is that now we have to be very careful. Where is this pro change proposal coming from and where is it going to? So there is this base repository and head repository and there is the base branch and this branch here. And what this means is that this change proposal is supposed to go from my branch towards main. It's like the direction that arrow is pointing. So, mm -hmm. and I think if I zoomed out, it would be yeah. more intuitive, but harder, harder for you to read now on stream. Mm -hmm. But the thing to double check here is where do you want to send it to? Do you want to send it upstream towards the original repository? No, in this case, no. It's okay if it ha happens accidentally, but in this case, what you what you will want to do is to change this towards your repository. Okay. And once I do that, it's now it looks easier. Mm -hmm. And now, yes, from my improved pasta, yes, towards the main branch. Okay. So main will collect the changes in improved pasta. The same mm -hmm. again. Okay. Yep. And the other thing you can double check before before writing the title, before writing a description, and before creating this change proposal, I normally double check. I scroll down here, and I can see I can actually see the change. Mm -hmm. So this should look somehow familiar to you. If this looks like a completely different change than you thought, then I go back and double check whether this is really correct. Yeah. OK. Back to the exercise, so two things. Open a pull request and then merge it. And after the merge, again, you can browse the uh, the network of branches. And you should also, you should be able to see your improved recipe or your new recipe should now be on your main branch. Mm -hmm. And after the exercise, Richard and me will will then go through some of the key steps here and discuss uh, discuss um, maybe some possibilities yeah. that 
we didn't want to point out at this point yet. Yeah, okay. Let's just make sure that we have that in the notes. And we do. So now scrolling to the end of the document. At the end of the document, you can find where the exercise is. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any commits yet, if you don't have a branch yet, you can still create it. Yeah. And please also let us know here how it's going, whether it's you are ready or whether you are confused or whether you wish there was more time. And our plan is to be back 35 minutes past the hour. OK. Good. And if people can't do this, is that OK? Does anything else depend on it right now? So if, if people get stuck, I would say write us some questions, look at some questions. Not a problem at all. Uh, okay. Let's meet again here on stream because yeah. we will go through all the key steps. All the rest of today will be demonstration mm -hmm. and everything tomorrow uh, doesn't depend on it. Yeah. Tomorrow one can restart even if today something failed. Yeah. Okay. Great. See you all in 20 minutes. Good luck and please keep the questions coming. Bye. Good, welcome back, back from exercise. And thanks so much for giving us here live feedback on how it's going. So based on this, it seems that it went pretty well. And the goal of this exercise was open a pull request and merge. And if you did it purely within VS Code or purely <laughs> on the command line, then, then a pull request wasn't necessary. You could merge these changes locally without going through GitHub. Should we? Should I show show how to do this? And then we can maybe discuss some of the key steps in there. Sounds good. OK, so what do you show first? Yeah, I will navigate back to my my copy. In During the exercise, I created one more commit. So I'm still on my like pasta improvement branch. But now there are two commits. And I would like to get them back to main. So I'm here. Uh, if I reload, yes, five minutes ago there was another change. Okay. And let me open up the pull request. And before the exercise, we showed that it's now important to double check where is it going from and where is it going to. And I want I want the pull request to to stay within my repository. Mm -hmm. And I double check that it's from the branch that I thought I want to send from mm -hmm. and towards the main. That yeah. looks pretty good. Okay. It also tells me that it's able to merge. So there won't be any conflicts. We will conf we will create a conflict a little bit later. Yeah, OK. What else should I do here? You need to describe it anyhow. Yeah, I so guess this if... is maybe not a great description, uh, improve pasta. It's not very specific. Yeah. So I like to give make this a little bit clearer that uh, I added two concrete steps to the instructions for Boscaiola. Mm -hmm. There could be a bit more context here. I also like to double check which commits are part of this change proposal, these two. Mm -hmm. And what is the change? This one down here. This looks yeah. all pretty good. Before opening it up, uh, we wanted to tell you that there is, you can actually choose, there is something called draft pull request that can be useful to know. It can be a really neat little feature is that Sometimes I want to inform my collaborator, in this case Richard, that I have a I'm working on a change, yeah. but it's actually not it's not finished yet. Mm. I don't want it to be merged, mm. but I would like you to look at it. I would like you to know it, know about it, and maybe give me feedback. So this can be useful for let me click on it. I will create a draft pull request. Because then if I open the draft pull request, 
it's here on top left. It's marked as draft. It's not meant to be merged. It's not even possible to merge. So I, we cannot accidentally click here and merge, but I can already collect feedback. And once right. I'm ready with... Should I make a comment on there? Yeah, yes, please. Please comment on it. <laughs> Okay, I have found it, I'm opening it, and you mm -hmm. should see something appear there. Because then uh, this way we can actually have a conversation here. Well, look, there it appears. Yeah. So here we could yeah. talk about it, clarify things. We will also tomorrow and on Thursday um, show you how you can then how I can make them improvements to my change proposal. I will leave that out, out for now. But once yeah. this is really ready for review and meaning ready to be merged, I can mark it ready. Then it's not draft anymore, it's open. Mm -hmm. And now if we are more people in the project, I would actually like somebody else to merge it, not, not just me. If I'm on my own, I'm also the one the one person reviewing. And here before clicking, so now it, the, the change proposal is open, but it's not merged yet. Before clicking here, I again wanted to show you because somebody asked about it, that also here we have several options. I can do the default thing. There is also something called squash. Squashing, what it would do is it would it would combine these two commits that I had into one. So after it's merged, it would show up as one single commit. And then there is also something called rebase, which is which is an alternative to a merge. So instead of creating a merge commit, it would mm -hmm. it would move the new commits behind okay. uh, the main branch. We will so, not go into much too much detail here. I yeah. Think. So they're like all different ways of managing mm -hmm. the network. Yeah. But I guess people should stick with merge commit to be simple yeah. until there's. I agree. And later, I think people can experiment. <laughs> so later on your own, in this example repository, you can also test out the other options. Right now, we just wanted you to know that these exist. And then I will now merge. Confirm. And as soon as I click here, now the two commits are part of the main branch. Mm -hmm. What is this here? Delete branch, what will it do? Hmm. Does it delete the commits or does it delete the branch pointer? Yeah, so it it doesn't it does not delete the commits and I can I can demonstrate it. I will show you what it does. Maybe uh, let's duplicate this tab. I will now navigate to insights and network and i will try to find the merge commit that i just created and now it needs to do a little bit of thinking because now it's we were many people doing many changes which is wonderful but the one that i the one that i just created is this one and i merged from this this branch here, which is maybe hard for you to read, but it says other one slash improve pasta, and it points to the commit just before the merge commit. And now if I go back here, and if I delete the branch, delete it, it will not delete any commits. But if I reload this, we will see what happened. So many questions coming in, this is perfect. The commits are still there. This one is still there, and the other one is still there. But the mm -hmm. only thing that disappeared is this sticky note uh -huh. next yeah. to this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So hopefully now we understand a little bit better what what branches are in Git. And what we can do now, if we think that this would be interesting, we could also look into the upstream repository which is ah. the original repository that we mm -hmm. 
that I forked from. And see if someone has maybe made a pull yep. request there for us to look. And yes, there are. Great. So what there are did these... <laughs> some of them accidental, some of them willing, but this is awesome, isn't it? Yeah, what do each of these mean? So it's <coughs> Okay, you need to you need to speak. Okay, I will take over here. So what the <laughs> Uh, what the, it's the same thing that we did before, but instead of doing the pull requests within the repository here, ten, there are 10 pull requests which are from your fork towards this original repository. And now you have a mechanism in the, at your hands to suggest changes to any open uh, source repository on GitHub or GitLab. And I can maybe look at some of those. This is one that I created earlier today. One interesting happening, one thing that is interesting here is that it, it has this keyword here and we will return to it tomorrow and on Thursday. So in a change proposal, I can even refer to issues. This is issue number three. What was in the issue number three? In an issue number three, I was sharing an idea. And I open an issue so that I can collect feedback before even starting the work. So that's one thing I can do with pull requests. I can then refer to discussions that happened before and cross-reference things. Mm -hmm. And I will maybe merge this one. I looked at it before. It's a nice recipe for a kebab. The maybe the one one thing I would improve that would make my work easier would be um, a like a pull request or a better title. Mm -hmm. We also have this thing here: approve and run. Mm. I have good. a feeling we'll learn about that next week. But this is just a preview. So we we have we we have here sneakily in this in this repository, and maybe you can all find it. There is a test. We have an automated test that verifies something. Um, and here all the checks are passing, which means that this pull request mechanism even allows me to run automations like testing and make sure that the functionality of this recipe book is preserved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a wonderful kebab recipe <laughs> that I will now merge and then it's part of the it's part of the recipe book. Thanks so much. Let's merge and I will also say thank you. Okay, cool. So now here's someone that's completely unrelated to us has made a proposal. Nothing has been changed until we reviewed it and accepted it. And now it's part of our stuff. Yeah. And I guess this is basically how all the open source kind of software works. So it's there, people can contribute, but the managers, owners, whatever, mm -hmm. review and accept it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just looking at the questions. So the next thing we want to do, but I'm now wondering whether we will do it before the break or after the break, is that I want to sh actually create a conflict. Some of you might have seen conflicts. I will create it and we will also resolve it and we will discuss what this, yeah. what it is and what is good about it. Maybe to keep just... it all together, we could go over some questions from the notes mm -hmm. and then make the conflict and resolve after the break. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so let's which see. Question should we lift up here? Um, <coughs> there's two number 55 and 56 about safely deleting a branch. So does deleting the branch lose any information? No, it's... It's after merging a pull request, it's, I would say it's always safe to delete it. Mm -hmm. 
it's not a problem if you forget to delete it. It will be just there. It's yeah. it doesn't take much space. Yeah. So sometimes um, I forget to delete them, and then if I go back into this repository. What is this? How can I find all the branches? Is it because I'm zoomed out? Yeah. So uh -huh. then sometimes mm -hmm. I go into this branches overview, which is next to the name of the branch. And in this overview, it's you can then I can see which branches are active. So for instance, this branch is 20 commit 28 commits behind. You you will be also see which branches are merged. This one is open merge request and if i would merge it it would show a different symbol and then i can also i can also tidy up here so the only bad thing can happen if you forget is that you have lots of lots of branches here and it's but it doesn't take any like space and it's always safe to delete it because it doesn't remove commits it only removes this label that we don't need anymore yeah there's also several questions about if you have several different changes and you want to make separate pull requests out of them. And I think this is sort of tied up or implicit if the changes are on the same branch. That's an excellent question. And first off, if they are on the same branch, am I correct that you, it's either you merge the whole branch or none of the branch? Like the branch is the fundamental unit of yeah. work. Okay. So pull requests are from branch to branch. Uh, so all the commits from the source branch will get integrated into the target branch. And for us, it means that uh, to organize our work, we will try to to not put unrelated things onto the same branch. So what I like to do is that if I try to do something new, I create a new branch. And sometimes I get confused and sometimes things, things get messy. Mm -hmm. Also, if you are completely new to Git and GitHub, I wouldn't overthink it too much. I think it's better to create lots of commits. And at the beginning, maybe, okay, there will be some unrelated changes in a pull request and maybe there will be some unrelated changes on a branch. But later, when you get more comfortable, we recommend create new branch for every new thing. Don't put unrelated things into the same branch. Don't put unrelated things into the same commit. And this will also make the pull request review easier for the other person because then they only have to focus on one thing and not these like two completely unrelated things. It might also be that if I re review a pull request, maybe I understand, I have a good understanding about the one thing, but I have no no knowledge about the other thing and then I cannot review it. And instead, if it was two, two pull requests, we could give the one to me and the other one to the other person who knows about this other thing. Yeah. Okay, do we still have time for a few more questions? Um, yes, we have three more minutes. Okay, Before I break. had a good one here. Uh, where was it? Maybe the last one, R60. Uh, uh, yeah, one? That, that, that's good. Yeah, go for it. So the question is multiple people, they work on the same file and they make commits and they merge into the same branch. You can imagine things will get messy. What is the best practice to solve the issue? So if the multiple people are editing the same file in different places, it's not a problem, Git will figure it out. So for instance, if we have a recipe and somebody is working on the ingredients and somebody else is changing the instructions, it's not a problem. Git will know that these are different changes and it will merge them automatically. Uh, the conflicts that we will see is when we modify the same portion of the file in two different ways. And we will do that after the break. Uh, but the best practice to solve the issue is if you notice in your project that lots of people are working on the same file 
I think it's good if they at least know about it. So mm -hmm. hopefully every all the three different people who work on the same file at least know that other two people are doing something. So sometimes in addition to just creating branches and commits, I notify my colleagues on the chat and tell them, hey, everybody, in the next two weeks, I will be in this file and you are there too, just that you know. Or I open up a draft pull request mm. and it's not finished, but at least my colleagues see that, aha, uh -huh, the other and one is doing something in that file. So then maybe they will, we better coordinate a little bit. It's like you keep updating that file um, mm -hmm. or that pull request constantly over time. So people track. Yeah. 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 And I think we'll talk more about this later. Like, yeah, more tomorrow. To so tomorrow that. we talk about mm -hmm. how does code review really work? And on, okay. uh, sorry, on Thursday. And really practice this, like what are what are best practices to yeah. to collaborate with in your own group or what are best practices to suggest changes to somebody else's project and avoid any surprises. Yeah. Okay. If there's time, there's a good one. I merged a branch. No. Which one uh, is it? 49. So I thought this was about updating pull requests, but so it goes, I merged a branch, but then after the merge, I made some changes to the branch and I did a com commit and push to the branch. So, okay, so the branch was merged and then you keep working on it. Mm -hmm. Should I, uh, maybe let's talk about the general picture here. So if you make a branch and you make a pull request out of the branch and you update that branch, um then the pull request gets updated instantly is that correct yes okay uh, until it's merged until it's merged once it's merged i i consider the branch it's done for me i can delete it or not okay. but i don't touch it again for anything new create a new branch yeah but if you do keep updating the branch after it's merged it becomes well then this is not automatically merged, but you can make a new pull request. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, Should we go for a break? And then yeah, after that, let's do that. some conflicts. Okay. And do some conflict resolution, but in a very nice way. Sounds good. Okay. We'll be back six minutes after the hour. Yeah. Uh, let's see. See you then. Bye. Bye. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, remaining 25 Hi. minutes. And we will talk about conflict resolution. Yeah. So what's a conflict? It's so we have some text about it and explained in a sentence or two, but we really want to also demonstrate it is it's the same portion of the same file is modified on two different branches in two different ways. And later we try to recombine these branches. And this can either happen that I do two different modifications myself and later try to merge them. Yeah. Or it could be more typical is two different people uh, modify the same portion of the file in two different ways. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they try to merge changes, for instance, as part of a pull request, they notice that there is a conflict. And yeah. you have maybe already seen it, and we here will, this will be only a demonstration. So we, mm -hmm. so this is the common case where the same things get modified twice, and in order to combine them, you have to actually decide, like a human has to be there and decide which one yeah. to take. Yeah. Okay. And we okay. we paste the link here. And so right now, for everybody, you can like lean back, watch, and ask questions on the notes here. Mm -hmm. And then later, if you want to test it out yourself, you can. But now this will be just demonstration. Yeah. And I presume Git has good tools to manage this. Yeah. So you can solve this locally. You can solve it in GitLab. You can solve it in GitHub. What we will show here is mm -hmm. I will create the conflict on GitHub. We will also solve it on GitHub. Mm -hmm. And okay. I'll do that back in my repository, in my recipe book. Yeah. And I will make now two changes, one on main, 
Mm -hmm. And the other change on this branch, I, I think I need to create a new branch for it. Mm -hmm. So let me first create a branch. I will create a branch and I want to, I will call it less cilantro because I'm not so much a fan. So I will take a guacamole recipe and remove a little bit of cilantro from the recipe. Okay. So new branch. And I am on the less cilantro branch. I will mm -hmm. now navigate to the guacamole recipe and make a change there. Here guacamole, edit pen. And I would like less 0 0.5. Tablespoons. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay. And then the typical commit I'm message. Batch. This is not a good message. I'll have much better is reduce amount of by half. And even better is why I did it because uh, with Git you can see uh, who changed and what they changed, but sometimes it's hard to see why I did it because, well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I don't like it. I don't like that ingredient so much. Yeah, okay. And then I guess when someone's looking at it later and resolving, they can understand why. Like, was there something wrong or is this a preference mm -hmm. thing? Yeah. Okay. Good. We have that commit. Yeah. No pull request yet. I will now navigate back to main. Mm -hmm. And on the main branch, I will modify the same, same file. Now I'm same file. You notice that on the main branch, it still it still says mm -hmm. one tablespoon, mm -hmm. and on the main branch, this could be now somebody else really likes this ingredient. Mm -hmm. Here we go from one to two. Okay. Yeah. So I created two commits. And okay. they are not, not merged yet. And I could browse them on the on the graph. But yeah. let me now. Now we anticipate that there will be a conflict. I will create yes. a pull request. Mm -hmm. And again, I want it within my own repository here. From less cilantro to main and already here. Mm -hmm. OK. We cannot automatically merge. Yeah. But we don't worry. Let me open it anyway. It will not be a draft one. I will open it. Let's see what happens. It has conflicts. Okay, this looks different. And I think in the notes we saw some people with questions where they saw a message like this. Mm -hmm. But I guess this is actually good here. So if two people do the same thing different ways, the worst possible case is that you pick one of them randomly and you don't realize it happened. Mm -hmm. And this is presumably going to let us understand what happened and solve it. So how do yeah. we do that? So again, I, I also really emphasize what you that it's a good thing. This is a really good thing. It will prevent us from accidentally remove each other's work. It even it didn't matter whether which change was there first. So if earlier today we talked a little bit. There were some questions about chronology of commits. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether the one commit was at nine o'clock and the other one at eleven o'clock. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter to the conflict. Yeah. It happened on two different branches. It doesn't. It asks me now to intervene, and that's good because it cannot decide for, for me. And now there are many ways to resolve it, but we will now do the graphical way here directly on the web, resolve yeah. conflicts. Which is often what I'll do for relatively simple, easy to understand things like this. So this sure and looks pretty it, clear. If people try it locally, it will look similar. So it 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 adds these markers here, which mark that this change happened on this branch and this modification happened on the main branch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now it asked me to well please decide yes okay and what what are we going to pick 
I don't know. Yeah, what? Or could the recipe say cilantro to taste between half and two tablespoons? It could. So I don't it's actually chewy. have to take, pick one of the two. I can also pick a compromise. Yeah. I could say zero to two to taste. But what I have to do is I have to remove these extra markers. Mm -hmm. So this stuff is just for me, but I should remove it before I mark it as resolved. It even doesn't let me. Mm. It tells me now mm -hmm. that remove all conflict markers to resolve this file. And what it yeah. means is remove this and remove all this extra stuff. Okay. And yeah. now I can mark it as resolved. And the file looks like it should look now. Mm -hmm. So we can tell when it's done. There's no weird stuff there. Okay. Mark as resolved. Yeah. And now the resolution will be an additional commit. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. So again, it's the idea of making a commit somehow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now it's happy. There is no conflict now because this this commit uh, was the contained the resolution, mm -hmm. and now we can merge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I mean, that wasn't that hard. I mean, it showed no. us what the problem was. We could look at it. So when would a conflict resolution be very difficult? I guess if, so here two people are doing the same things, but it's one line. But let's say two people both rewrite the whole recipe from scratch, then you'll basically see two copies of the recipe there and have to, yeah. well, here it was easy because it was not too many changes and not in too many places. So sometimes conflicts can be all over the place. Uh, it can also be more complicated if this is a change to where I simply don't know the answer. I mean, Git is asking me, should I take the one or the other? But what if I simply don't know? Sometimes I need to ask my colleague who maybe knows more about that code. And then, But then we can have a conversation on the pull request thread and figure out what is which version is the one that we should keep. But it's good that we get asked. So no no work is deleted by accident. Okay. Now we and have less than 15 minutes left. We can we still and, have time for questions. And did you merge we, the pull request already? I didn't yet. Okay. Should I? Yeah. Oh uh, should you? I guess why not? Yeah. It's it's on my, my copy. Yeah. Save to delete, yes it is. Delete branch. Okay. So at this stage, the our ambition was that we we understand what a conflict is. Uh, how to resolve a conflict, you can try it out on your own. It will anyway appear sooner or later. Mm -hmm. It might also appear on Thursday when we collaborate and then we will return to it. Yeah. And on Thursday, do we talk about how to reduce conflicts? Yes. Or make them less likely. That's yeah. the, yeah. Which is really nothing special to get, but it's ways people work together yeah. on things. Very useful lesson. And so now with on one screen, I see your questions coming in and we still have time for them. I also wanted to now zoom out here a little bit and again, tell you what was the big picture. So today, the big picture was seeing a Git repository and seeing commits. We started in the web, we created a copy, we created commits, we created branches, and we were able to merge them. Tomorrow, we will move from, from the web. We will learn how to copy a repository from the web to a laptop. But also, we will learn how to go the other way. Uh, if you have a project, if you have some code, script, files, how to turn it into a Git repository and share it on, on, on the web. And we will learn a bit more really useful tools on how to inspect the history of a project. Because very often we don't start from zero, but we join an existing project and how to navigate in that. And we will then close tomorrow by discussing like where to start, and how to find a good balance.
of not trying to make things too perfect. Mm -hmm. Thursday will be all about collaboration. Yeah. I will open up okay. questions here. We should also paste somewhere a feedback form because yeah. at the end of every day we want to ask you about yeah. one thing that you liked and one thing that we should improve. And if we can improve it on already until tomorrow, we will try to. Let me browse here through the questions. Let's see, I'm looking for the feedback. Yeah, question 62. Uh, you that's a good question and we will return to it on Thursday but already as a little preview is that my fork is now it has a couple of commits that nobody else has but also it's lacking a couple of commits and you can then on Thursday we will then learn how you can then synchronize update your fork so that I get also the nice kebab recipe and uh, uh, other recipes that might have been submitted to the upstream repository. So more about that on Thursday. But it's a great question. Question yeah. 63. How about using branches no matter how small the changes are and no matter the size of the team, one person or several? Really great question. And I, so if I'm if I'm on my own, and I know that I want to have that change, there is I I often just commit directly on main. I typically start using branches when I'm not so sure about whether this will work out. I want to keep it separate because it's changing lots of things, and I want to not keep it in the main main code yet. Or if I'm more than one person. If we are more than one person, then I typically start using branches and start using code review. Yeah. Can I retract the merge request? Yes, you can close it. So if you close it, uh, then that means retracting. Often it's nice to write down why you closed it. So sometimes I see people just closing it and I'm not sure why, like, why was it closed. So you can add a sentence that, oh yeah, I found out that this is maybe not the best way of doing it. I need to think about it more. I close it, I might re reopen it later. And you can, so you can also later reopen a, a pull request which has been closed. Yeah. And here a little bit further down on the screen is the feedback form. Uh, let us know about, let us know about the speed. Was it the right speed? Was it too fast, too slow? Also about the level. And I, And we know that especially on day one, it's difficult to find the balance of the right level. Over the next day, days, things will calibrate a little bit better. But we really, our goal is to keep everybody engaged. Um, let us know how the exercises went and tell us one thing that was really good and one thing that was maybe not so good. And we really want to hear also the things to improve. Yeah, I'm filling in answers here. Mm -hmm. uh, what about discussions and issues versus discussion and pull request? Number yeah, 65. That's a good question. So I, mm -hmm. so if this is, if this is something bigger, a bigger change, or I'm not sure whether whether the repository wants my change at all. I often I start with an issue and first ask around, like, is this a good idea? Do you want this? What is the right place? Which file? Um, so uh, sometimes it starts in issue, yeah. but there can be also pull requests, and then in the pull request I can refer to the issue. But there can also be pull requests which did, which did not start in an issue and it just appears there and then then maybe we continue the discussion in the pull request. The discussion in the pull request is maybe more about, okay, how do I improve this thing? And in the issue, it's more about uh, what is a good starting point? Is this the right approach? Is this something we want at all? And sometimes discussion appear on both places and that's okay too. And then 
but both can cross-reference each other. So the issue can then refer to the pull request, the pull request can refer to the issue. Under feedback for something to improve for next time, there's this concept of git push that wasn't introduced. And I think that's partly mm -hmm. our thing. So we will introduce it properly mm -hmm. tomorrow, I believe. Yeah. So today we only introduced enough to go through the GitHub web interface. And of course people could do more. There were mm -hmm. instructions there, but we, yeah, like it's sort of this like dependency thing. Mm -hmm. um, but don't worry, we will get to it all. Yeah, so some things are a little bit vague by design, but they will get clarified. It's like looking at a blurry picture and it will get clearer tomorrow and even clearer on Thursday. And it's all a balance to, to not overwhelm with too many details as mm -hmm. on day one, but yeah. concepts like what is really happening when we push, what is happening when we pull. We will do more of that tomorrow and really we will get an understanding of it on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feedback, positive thing, cute cat. Very often we have this wanting to improve more more cat. <laughs> <Isn't there? laughs> mm. No, it, it's usually there on days the cat doesn't come by. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, and thanks also for the feedback about that maybe some examples need more detail, maybe more screenshots, more detail for the command line. Oh, one, one cool thing about this workshop is that by Thursday, you will all be able to send pull requests to, yeah. to this repository and also maybe send us improvements for the lesson. And an improvement can also be opening an issue and uh, telling us about there. But thanks a lot for telling us here. So we look at this feedback right. and the thing that we can improve for tomorrow, we will. The things that we can improve until next workshop, mm -hmm. we will as well. Yeah. Under one of the things to improve next time, it goes back to the question of using Git for things like Word documents. Also, by the way, can you please not select everything on the page because there's a risk of it all getting deleted and it highlights it for everyone. Thanks. Yes, thanks. So Word document. So let's say you have a file that's not a traditional code file or whatever. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you don't edit it through the GitHub web interface. So yes, you can upload it, you can download it, things like that. If you're on your own computer, you can put it there, you can edit it with Word, and then you would basically tell Git, okay, now please update your memory of this file each time you make a commit. And things like comparing can't be done in the GitHub web interface. It can't be done through the other editors. Actually, there are different extensions you can use for Git, which let you compare different types of files, but let's ignore those for now. So what we'd say as far as this lesson is concerned, if it's not a text file, then basically you modify it however you would normally, and then you tell Git, remember this new copy, record the mm -hmm. changes. And that's the extent of what we'll talk about for now. Yeah, yes. really looking forward to tomorrow. We will also then uh, talk about how to ignore certain files because maybe not all the files should go into a repository. We left it out today, but we will return to it. And really my goal is that yeah. by tomorrow, um, everybody is able to share their work on places like GitHub or GitLab. Yeah. Can you scroll down a little bit? I'm writing mm -hmm. news for day. One. Oh, thanks. So tomorrow we will do many of the same things, but on our own computers. Is that correct? Yeah. 
being able to clone, so being able to copy a repository from, from the web to the laptop and continue there, but also do the opposite, being able to share my work so that others can copy it and others can contribute it. These are the goals for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Is there any special preparation to do? Mm. Yes, there is, because tomorrow, since we will work locally, we tomorrow we will need either something like VS Code or the command line to go through all the steps. So. Now, if somebody doesn't have these and only wants to do everything on the web, I would say that please still show up. There is maybe a few steps that you can you you then cannot follow because they are about how to make a local commit. Yeah. And you'll learn what to prepare for in the future. So yeah. that's completely fine also. Yeah. Okay. So not much to yeah. prepare for tomorrow. There will be something to prepare for day three for Thursday, which because then we want to collaborate and we will make it possible to collaborate even if uh, for individual participants. So then we will, the individual participants, we will invite you into our exercise repository. And for this, you will need to do a few quick clicks, but mm -hmm. we, will send them, we will send a message about this. Yeah. Yeah. So videos, so as soon as this is done, if not already, the replay will be available on Twitch and last there for seven days. And probably by midnight Eastern European time, the videos will be processed and on YouTube. So yes, you can catch up with everything we did today. Mm -hmm. And what an amazing time management we have. So it's half half past the hour. Thanks so much, everybody who contributed. And there were many people, um, not only those who we've seen here on video, but also people in the background preparing things, managing exercise teams, uh, answering questions. So thanks so much, everybody. And we will see you tomorrow. Yeah, great. OK, so see you later then. Yeah, thanks so much. Bye.